Hello, I'm Meli for edu for java and this is a presentation of a new chain of tutorials which we hope you like. They are about game programming. What you are seeing is an HTDCIA in which I'm playing a little game. It is not finished, it's uh, like an alpha version that I have made by myself. In the next tutorials we are going to learn game programming concepts. As well as Android specific characteristics for game programming. And a little of game architecture, how we are going to structure a game. Here we have the same game but with less characters or guys. As you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ok, as you can see here are bad and good guys. These ones with wings are the good ones. When you kill one of these, they scream as a terrified woman and leave a blood of stain. When you kill one of these, it makes an ouch and leaves a blood, blood stain too. After a few seconds, the blood stain disappears. The idea is to kill the bad guys, guys as always. <laughs> the ones that have no wings try not to kill the good guys. In other words, kill the boys and not the girls. Here I present you a summary of what we are going to see in the next tutorials. First, we have to learn the concepts of game programming. First of all, game loop. What is a game loop? Game loop is um, when you see a movie, what you really see is a picture painted over another. Several times per second. A computer monitor can print 80 pictures per second. In this simple game, we are making, we are going to print 10 frames per second. That means we are going to print 10 pictures in a second. Then in this loop, each time we iterate, we print a picture. This is printed so many times per second that we have a video animation. Also in this game loop, in addition to updating the picture, the information of the game is updated. Normally we have an engine, point two. This engine is in charge of uh, the update of the game state and the drawing of the pictures. These uh, are the two principal methods called by the game loop. In the update, each character is updated. The position, if it reaches the border, to turn and go in the opposite direction. Okay, it updates what people call the game physics, for example. When a character walks, it has an inertia. This inertia is shown calling this update. In each call, we move the character one way or the other. Three, sprites is an old concept. It's uh, the concept of, let's see, here the little guys are the sprites. 
The sprites normally have characteristics like movements, they can have sound, they're a, a little entity really. In our um, example, this is a uh, sprite. This blood stain is also a sprite. It's alive. Now it disappears. Each one of these is a sprite. Okay then, this is a sprite. Uh, we will see it later on. Collision detection. It is when it's necessary to know uh, when, for example, this one gets to the border here and goes in this direction. Uh, it's detected that it was going to get out from the screen and when it detects the border it changes direction. Another collision detection can be this. When I click, how, it, how does it know if I kill someone? It needs to be aware that in the X, Y position where I click, there was a guy. And then when it detects that here there's a collision between the click position and a guy, I make the character disappear. And uh, the blood stain appears. After a few seconds, it disappears too. Okay, with collision detection. Game resources, how to find the images. We are going to see this in detail, but for now let's go here to resources and um, we can see these are my images resources. See? This is a little guy. This is a bad guy. Here we have another bad one. You can see it's a walking front. The legs are in different positions. Here we have a good one. I made this with um, a special program. I saw in a web that we are going to see in the next tutorial. See, here it is going left, moving its legs. Next, uh, we have sound resources too. Here in raw. I don't know if you're going to hear this, but when you click here, if it runs correctly, we're going to hear, yes, this is the scream of a woman. And this is when we click Ow. on the man. And um, what else? Uh, we're going to see under specific characteristics used for the game. For example, the use of surface view. Um, surface view is a low-level view. When we are developing a game, we are worried about the performance. So we use the low-level view. We are going to learn what is a holder and how to handle its events to. How Android manages the resources, how you put them into memory, how you load them, um, referring to game architecture. Well, this is as in general architecture really. The idea of the architecture is to divide the problem in simple and reusable parts. In our case, uh, we're going to try to uncouple, put into one independent place the game logical part and in another place the Android specifics. Why? Because um, my idea is that with the same development we did for this game, we are going to use it to do an Apple game, Applet game, and also a Java game without developing again the entire program. Okay, as a first introduction, I hope it has been enough. See you in the next tutorial of Android game programming. Good luck! <laughs>